This video is brought to you by jsk.com, we're one of the largest tool hotel company in Canada's capital region. If you want to buy any tools you see in this video, please come to our store or visit our website. More detail down in the video description. Hey guys, Jason here. So we're indeed still investigating on the M18 batteries, and the last video is only part one of a likely three-part video series. In the next part, we'll test the absolute limit of M18 batteries and basically make it suffer. Over the course of last week, we did hundreds of cuts on the Midasol, and we still need some time to make sense of all those results. So this video is kind of a in-between video investigation. Since we have all those batteries on hand and the awesome service department, I'll try to take apart all 11 of those batteries and see what's inside. To take all those batteries apart, we only need a few tools. A heat gun to remove the stickers, a security T10 bit, a T8 bit, and of course a screwdriver. As a side note, you have to use a security T10 bit, which has a hole in the middle to prevent tempering, even though everyone can just go and buy the correct bit. Within all 11 M18 batteries, there are three different designs. Single roll cell batteries like the CP1.5, CP2, and CP3 have stickers that cover the seams of the top and bottom shells. So to remove those, we need to use the heat gun. After we remove the stickers, there are four screws holding the top plate. And the location of the screw is pretty much the same for all M18 batteries. Once you took out the screws, you can now open the bottom housing and have access to the cells. And by the looks of it, the CP1.5 is using five Samsung 18615 series. The cell model is INR 18650-15M, which is a 3.6 volt, 1500 milliamp hour cell with a max discharge current of 23 amps. With the same method, we can take apart the CP2 and CP3. And the interesting thing is, with the CP2.0, Milwaukee is using LG cells with the same physical size with 200 milliamp hour rating and 3.6 volt. With the CP3.0, the cell got physically larger from 18650 to 21700 with again 3.6 volt rating, 3000 milliamp hour per cell, and 35 amps of discharge current. We'll talk a bit more about those later in the video, and now let's take apart all those other batteries. For all batteries with two rows of cells, namely the XC batteries, um, there's only four T10 security screws. Once you unscrew them, the internal cell assembly should pop right out with some force. At this point, if you really want to look at the individual cell, you have to figure out a way to remove the solder connections without damaging it, but I won't recommend doing Doing so since it looks really hard to put back. To identify each cell, we can just look at the color, physical dimension, and cells in cap design. There are multiple articles on the internet that can help you to find out what battery cell you have, and I'll link those in the video description. For two of the largest emitting batteries we currently have on the market, the HD batteries have four extra normal TA screws at the bottom holding the cell assembly inside the casing. You need to remove those to take apart the battery too. Now, from what we can see, all M18 batteries are 5S batteries, some with just one roll, some with three rolls in parallel. And that makes sense, since five 3.6 volt batteries in series gives you 18 volt. And to have larger capacity, they simply put more rolls in parallel. And all the one roll batteries are called CP batteries, all the 5S 2P batteries are called XC batteries, and all the 3P batteries are called HD batteries. And to increase capacity with the same cell configuration, Milwaukee simply use larger capacity cells with lower discharge current. Since May of 2018, when they first announced the HD12, Milwaukee starts to shift the cells they use from the smaller 18650s to the larger 21700s for better performance and longevity. And here is everything we found. We tried our best to match the numbers and list the actual cell they use in the batteries here for any further reference. From what I can tell, there's no black magic that optimizes battery consumption. With larger capacity batteries, we're paying more for just larger capacity cells. And with the larger capacity, we get the penalty of decreased in discharge current. So that's it folks. This video, as I said in the beginning, is just a small insight on the inside of emitting batteries and kind of leads to our next and final part on the whole emitting battery investment. Please stay tuned and let's find out together why you need larger batteries next time. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and click the like button. Please share this video with your friends, your families, and your neighbors. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for behind the scenes and amazing deals. See you next time. Bye. Uh, okay.